My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll examine anhydrous ammonia by exploring its uses, chemical properties, exposure limits, and first aid measures. Ammonia is a phenomenal chemical. It has a wide variety of uses in many different industries. Ammonia's chemical composition is one part nitrogen and three parts hydrogen. Therefore, ammonia can be used to replenish nitrogen lost in the soil during plant growth. Sometimes ammonia is applied directly as a fertilizer, but it also can be mixed with other chemicals to create less toxic nitrogen-rich fertilizers. Because ammonia is alkaline, which means its pH is greater than seven, it is well suited to adjust the pH in water and wastewater that requires neutralization. Ammonia works wonders as a cleaning agent. Aqueous ammonia cleaners are inexpensive and available at most grocery stores. Ammonia is also used to reduce emissions from large boilers and power plants through a process called Selective Catalytic Reduction, or SCR. Fuel burning typically results in nitrogen oxides, or NOx gases, which are harmful to the environment. Injecting ammonia into an exhaust stack reduces these gases through a chemical reaction. As a refrigerant, ammonia has exceptional qualities that are unmatched by its synthetic refrigerant counterparts. Its thermodynamic properties, cost, availability, and environmental impact are extraordinary. The sole drawback is its acute toxicity toward humans, which makes knowing ammonia's chemical properties all the more important. Ammonia boils at minus 28.1 degrees Fahrenheit at normal atmospheric pressure. This means that in all but the most extreme winter conditions, ammonia will not remain a liquid, but will be in a gaseous state. This is important to understand because if a leak occurs from a pipe containing liquid ammonia, the ammonia will rapidly escape and look like a cloud. Ammonia vapor is lighter than air as expressed by a vapor density of 0.6. This is a desirable quality since it means that ammonia vapor will tend to rise away from the breathing zone of people near the source of the leak. One should be warned, however, that while ammonia will eventually rise due to its vapor density, large releases have been known to stay at ground level temporarily. The ability of a substance to dissolve in water is referred to as its solubility. Ammonia is highly soluble, which means it readily absorbs into water. This explains why eyewash and safety showers are essential for decontamination after exposure occurs. In addition, some refrigeration systems utilize ammonia diffusion tanks as a means of neutralizing ammonia released through a pressure relief valve. While flammability is generally not the primary concern, it is important to know that ammonia vapor may burn in air concentrations between 15 and 28%. Since it is difficult to maintain this narrow flammability range outdoors, the Department of Transportation Ammonia Placard has a green background, which is assigned to non-flammable chemicals. The NFPA 704 flammability designation for ammonia is one when stored outdoors, which indicates that ammonia will not readily burn. However, when ammonia is used indoors, the designation is three, which communicates the real risk of fire. Ammonia is considered a significant health hazard. If inhaled, it is pungent and can be suffocating. However, because of ammonia's low odor threshold and pungent odor, people generally seek relief from its effects at relatively low concentrations. Human contact with ammonia liquid and vapor can cause skin burns and eye irritation. It is important to know what concentration of ammonia is safe for humans. Permissible exposure limit, or PEL, is the legal limit of exposure of an employee to a chemical substance without respiratory protection. For ammonia, OSHA has mandated the PEL as 50 parts per million but some states such as California and Oregon have lowered the threshold to 25 parts per million. Exposure to concentrations above the PEL is not allowed unless respiratory protection is provided. IDLH is an acronym that stands for Immediately Dangerous to Life and Health. The IDLH threshold represents the concentration of a chemical to which healthy adult workers could be exposed without suffering permanent health effects. Ammonia's IDLH is 300 parts per million. This threshold is important because employees may not enter IDLH atmospheres using air purifying respirators. Only SCBAs or supplied air respirators can be used. If you are exposed to ammonia, it is important to implement first aid measures immediately. Inhalation is the most common route of exposure to ammonia. Exposure to low concentrations of ammonia vapor can typically be addressed by simply moving to fresh air. 
If high concentrations of ammonia vapor were inhaled, medical aid must be sought out. Liquid ammonia will aggressively attack skin tissue and result in chemical burns. When this occurs, it is vital that the affected area be immediately flushed with water for at least 15 minutes. Care should be taken when removing any clothing as the ammonia may have caused the material to be frozen to the skin. This is why it is critical to ensure that eye wash and safety showers are available and in good working order. After flushing is complete, seek out medical aid. It is important to instruct first responders not to apply burn cream as that will prevent ammonia from escaping the skin tissue. The eye is a particularly sensitive organ that must be protected from ammonia exposure. If eye contact occurs, utilize an eye wash or face wash station to flush the eye for at least 15 minutes. If contact lenses are worn, they must be removed before flushing the eye to prevent ammonia from being trapped between the eye and the lens. After flushing is complete, seek out medical aid. I trust you found this video on ammonia awareness useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.